at the open on the local market. We're joined now by Stan Shamu from IG in Melbourne. Stan, uh, just firstly in terms of the Aussie there, what did you make of the moves overnight above 94, then back below it? Uh, what are you expecting from the RBA minutes today? Morning, Brady. I think, yeah, we were absolutely were riding that momentum from uh, the China developments yesterday. Uh, that really helped uh, the, the Aussie push uh, through that 94 level, uh, sort of late in late Asian trade or early European trade. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't quite hang on to those gains. Uh, of course, uh, whilst uh, those uh, China property numbers as well showed that um, the um, prices in the four major cities um, were at the highest level since 2009. And of course, some of those uh, reforms from China are likely to help uh, uh, boost investment and growth in the future. Uh, it does look like uh, there is still skepticism about the domestic economy and exactly uh, what direction we're, we're headed at the moment. Uh, of course, we also continue to get mixed signals from Fed members. And as a result, I think our risk sentiment just uh, took a bit of a beating towards the end of uh, um, uh, the U.S. trade. Uh, of course, uh, there wasn't um, a specific trigger to this, but uh, I think uh, a bit of profit taking at record highs is always a temptation for a lot of traders out there. And of course, at the moment, there are no real catalysts to keep pushing uh, the market higher and uh, at elevated levels. Uh, then, um, you know, short covering is always something that uh, uh, traders will be looking out for. Uh, of course, with the Aussie now, we're back below that 94 level, and of course, it will remain uh, in focus ahead of um, uh, the RBA minutes. Uh, whilst we don't expect anything uh, new from the RBA minutes, in the last um, uh, decision, they did highlight that they remain ready to ease. Uh, and of course, we now need to know exactly what uh, the trigger for further easing will be. Um, I think all things considered, um, they will just reiterate uh, the fact that they're concerned about a high Aussie dollar. Uh, but we do know that they can't really do anything about this um, whilst uh, they want to ease uh, the, the, the risk of creating asset bubbles, particularly uh, in, in the property market, will remain uh, something that they're sceptical about. Uh, and, and at the same time as well, I think um, Australia is very dependent on the macroeconomic picture and as long as uh, the, the, the uh, greater macroeconomic uh, scope is changing and improving, uh, then this really uh, uh, leaves the, the RBA with limited scope to, um, to, to jawbone any further on uh, the Aussie dollar. Uh, and of course, if uh, China continues to show signs of improvement, uh, this will also continue to be positive for the Aussie dollar. So uh, while these minutes will definitely be something to watch, uh, we certainly don't expect too much um, um, new out of these minutes today. Just in terms of um, tapering, uh, Bloomberg survey of economists there, the median expectation is for a cut in the asset purchase program by the Fed to $70 billion in March. What, what's your expectation? Yeah, I think uh, that um, the, the current situation is uh, we've got a raft of uh, uh, Fed speak at the moment uh, and they, they continue to just um, uh, put out some mixed uh, tone out there. We had uh, Dudley speaking overnight. Um, he, he came out and basically said that well, the, econo uh, the, the U.S. economy has significantly recovered, uh, but whilst it's um, shown strong signs of uh, recovery, he doesn't uh, think it's um, strong enough to sustain uh, or to, to help uh, a sustainable improvement in the labor market to where the Fed needs it to get to before they start tapering. Uh, at the same time, we had uh, Plosa on the wires as well, just saying the Fed needs to set uh, a maximum amount for the QE program, and as soon as uh, they reach that maximum amount, then they should just uh, uh, completely end asset purchases. So uh, it really is confusing for a lot of uh, investors out there, and chances are with, with all these other Fed members set to speak, including Kosh Lakota uh, and um, Benanke himself this week, uh, then we will continue to see um, a repricing in uh, Fed uh, tapering expectations. Uh, the dollar index has now lost its handle uh, on that 81 level, so it really does look like confidence is starting to wane around, uh, um, tapering kicking in soon. But there are a growing number of analysts who actually feel if the next uh, non-form payrolls print is uh, uh, above 200,000 or around that 200,000 mark, then uh, we could possibly see tapering in, uh, in January at the moment. So uh, there, there certainly is a lot of confusion on that front, and I think it's part of the reason why um, investors are skeptical, skeptical, skeptical about pushing these equities higher at these elevated levels as well. I've been called for our local market then this morning. Uh, we're actually calling the market down 0.4%, so that's a slight extension of uh, the losses we saw yesterday. 
uh, fairly mixed moves, I suppose, in the resource names, um, whilst iron ore uh, continues to push higher to, to that $137 a tonne mark. Uh, this should be supportive of the likes of BHP and Rio and other iron ore names like uh, Arium, Atlas and uh, Fortescue. Uh, but uh, we, could, we think um, these uh, gold names will continue to drift uh, with gold just showing no signs of improvement and continuing to be sold into strength. Uh, so that should uh, balance out uh, the moves in the uh, material space, I suppose. Uh, but we are looking at uh, some fairly positive signs from a switch uh, from some of these yield players and into the cyclical names, uh, eyeing a, a fairly good improvement in um, uh, the mining services names, which underperformed for a prolonged period of time. So uh, they will be one to watch. Of course, yesterday we had uh, some fairly good performances from the likes of Downer, which uh, announced uh, that contract win. Uh, and today we've got Monodelphus, who's um, some of its biggest clients are actually the big miners, um, including BHP, Rio, Fortescue. So uh, they've got their AGM today, and they're likely to give a bit more guidance and um, scope uh, or a bit of insight into exactly what sort of uh, improvement uh, these guys are, are expecting going forward um, to next year. Uh, of course, it's no secret they've had a tough couple of years and uh, so they've um, ended up going through some uh, deep cost-cutting measures which uh, should be supportive going forward as long as we see an improvement um, in uh, the global macroeconomic space which would in turn lift uh, commodities and help these resource names uh, start to spend again. So uh, that I think that Monodolphus uh, AGM is uh, certainly one to watch today. All right. Great, Stan. Thank you so much for that. We'll chat to you through the session. Stan, Stan Shamu there from IG. Do stay with us. We're taking a very quick break here on First Business. But coming up, we're going to be crossing live to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to get some more analysis on the moves in the Dow overnight.